Exactly 10 o'clock a.m. So welcome everyone to another okay session of our charm. It's the community habit of action research on Mondays. Okay. I'm looking at the chat box right now. Please uh, let us know where you're participating from. Good to see usual faces. And to those who have uh, join the charm for the first time we are conducting free e-lecture series every mondays on action research and we call our community charm or the community habit of action research on monday so be part of the charm is spread the word that we have this free activity on monday you can tell your own networks your own friends your own uh, co-workers, your own students if they are interested, your own superiors if that's the case, okay, join us uh, every Monday from 10 to 12. So today we are very fortunate to have two speakers who will be talking about assessment. So to, without further ado, I now call on Dr. Socorro Aguha, one of yes. the research gurus in the country, to introduce our featured speakers for today. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tita, Dr. Lina. So, uh, uh, to give you the, the 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 overview of our speakers, may I call, may I have to start with uh, Miss Billet. Okay, Miss Billet, Miss Carmelita A. Estidola is currently serving as a physics teacher and the junior high school science coordinator at Delasal Zobel School. So after finishing BSE General Science from the Philippine Normal University, she studied at Delasal University in Manila and took up diploma program in physics under the DOST SEI scholarship. So this is also where she took M80 in general science. So she has just recently completed the academic requirements for Master of Distance Education or MDE at the University of the Philippines Open University. So it was after undergoing a series of action research training under Dr. Prudente and me that she now has a newly found passion to do researches about conducting online assessments and academic honesty. She will be having her talk on multiple attempts on online assessments address concerns in academic honesty, perceptions of students and teachers. And I our another uh, speaker is Ms. Leia Marie Tumlos Castillo, who is a graduate of AB Social Sciences from Ateneo de Manila University. She finished her MA in political science at De La Salle University, Manila. Currently, she is the junior high school vice principal at De La Salle Santiago Zubel School, an Apple teacher, a Google certified educator, and a Microsoft certified educator and an innovative educator expert. Oh, she has established a household name in DLZ after spending 13 years as a student and 16 years as an educator. Not only is she a dedicated educator, she is also a, a prolific textbook writer and ardent researcher. She wrote a senior high school textbook entitled Understanding Culture, Society and Politics under FNB Educational Incorporated. And she is actively engaged in presenting technology related action research papers in local and international conferences. Her research interests include education technology, curriculum design, and social studies education. So let us all welcome these two resource because we're having for today's charm. Thank you. 
Good morning, fellow educators and research enthusiasts, especially to uh, Dr. Prudente and Dr. Aguha. I am so pleased and honored to share with you today key findings from my latest classroom-based action research, which I think would be beneficial to all teachers and students alike. Before I proceed, allow me to introduce myself a bit more to all of you. So there are three unique facts about me. First, I am what they call a hybrid, a hybrid of green and blue. I spent most of my younger years in DLSE from prep to fourth year high school, then moved on to study social sciences where the, where the grass is blue in Ateneo. Thereafter, I pursued my master's in DLSU Manila, where I graduated in 2016. I'm truly grateful for all my schools because my education molded me into who I am right now. Second, unlike many professional females my age who have a penchant for shopping for makeup, bags, and shoes, um, me, well, I'd rather spend my free time reading and writing. My friends can attest to this. Um, reading is my pastime while writing sparks joy in me. Lastly, I am a nation builder at heart. Being a social studies teacher, I always try to inculcate in others, especially my children and my students, the importance of contributing to our society because I believe that what we do matters. Okay, so at this point, I would like to know I would like to know how how each one of you is. Um, in the chat box, kindly type in the number that corresponds to how you are feeling right now. Um, my partner, Ms. Millet, will uh, monitor the chat box. Okay, so kindly type in what you're feeling right now. One, two, three, four, or five. Kung mapapansin nyo yung mga numbers dyan, lahat yan positive. Dapat lahat positive because we are in charm. Okay? And we are uh, in a research webinar where we can learn a lot of things. So, Ms. Millet, um, kindly unmute. Can you let me know um, what are the numbers that are typed in? Oh, yes, Ms. Lay. I can see a lot of fours and fives initially. Wow. And then, <laughs> yes, and then I, I, I now got to see like, uh, well, uh, just a few twos and 2.5s. Oh. There <laughs> and I, yes, I guess we're ending with fours and fives again. There wow. are a lot of number fives now are coming in. Okay, I am I am <laughs> so happy that uh, there are lots of uh, fours and fives. Actually, what, whatever number they type in, actually, it's it's already um, you know um, a good thing for all of us. So That's thank you, Miss Millet. So um, I'm I'm very happy that you are inspired and curious to learn today. Okay, so. Um, okay, of course, um, because my um, action research is on geography, let's have some trivia, okay? So what I will do is I will uh, uh, kindly um, um, go to www.wooclap.com and key in the code so that um, I'd like to check your knowledge on uh, Asian geography. Doc Bing, Doc Inday, sali kayo, ha? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, 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 we will. <laughs> okay, hold on. Um, I'll just go to the, to the site. So are you already in WooClap? This is one of the um, interactive uh, apps that the teachers use in, in DLSZ. Okay, let's start. Okay. First question, in what Asian region does Sri Lanka belong to? So let's reveal the correct answer. Okay. Correct answer is South Asia. All right. Next, um, where can you find the Taj Mahal? Okay, so Correct answer is, right, the correct answer is Agra, India. Okay, thank you so much. Um, one more, we have one more. 
Okay, so kindly, another trivia, kindly go to wooclap.com again and key in uh, the code. Um, we'll have a fill in the blanks um, assessment. Okay, so blank is Japan's tallest peak located on the island of Honshu. Okay, so um, don't mind the, the, the spelling or how it was written, but the correct answer is Mount Fuji. Okay, so regardless on how you answered it with, uh, with a period or if it's uh, um, shortened, the answer is Mount Fuji. Okay, thank you so much, um, everyone, for, for uh, taking part in, in, in the geography uh, trivia. Now, for those of you who are very keen observers, actually, I gave out some clues already. If you can take a look at the map, right? Can you see the yellow and blue um, dots? Okay, because the answers a while ago were um, India and Sri Lanka. The blue and yellow dots, um, uh, the location of India and in the in the, in the um, in Sri Lanka are already on the screen, um, labeled by the blue and yellow dots. So if you know your, uh, if you're familiar with the with the maps where the countries are, then this could have been your clue already. Same with. Same with the second map. If you can take a look where the blue and yellow um, dot is, that's Japan, okay? So congratulations to those who got the correct answers. Thank you very much for your responses. So um, let's move on. Okay, so the focal point of my study is authentic assessments on the topic physical features of Asia, which focused on population and environment. In my study, the PDSA model was used. It is a model that provides a framework for developing, uh, testing, and implementing changes, which leads to improvement. Applying this to our context, such model was used for instruction purposes. Plan is the first stage of the PDSA model. As a response to COVID-19, DLSZ went through a series of undertakings to ensure and plan for continuity of learning to deliver home-based online distance learning or ODL. Among the processes we engaged into are the following, reflecting on the purpose on, on uh, why we are doing what we are doing by revisiting the school's philosophy. Second, knowing what each member of the community can do to empower them and make the program successful. Third, assessing the community's readiness for the remote transition. Fourth, selecting the learning model to know and understand its advantages and limitations. And evaluating technology practices to help the school make better choices. The initial step we took was to revisit our school's philosophy. As a trailblazer in 21st century education in south of NCR and with international recognition as an Apple Distinguished School and a Microsoft Showcase School, we in DLSE commit to create Lasallian achievers for God and country despite the pandemic. It is our earnest desire to produce Lasallians who are independent learners and who are leaders of their own learning. In particular, um, after revisiting our uh, philosophy in particular, we then identified what our community members can do. What is key here is empowering each stakeholder on their roles to make our ODL program successful, as stipulated in our continuity of learning plan. All stakeholders in DLSE paid close attention on how learning can be achieved in the new normal setup. As teachers, we gauge student learning through the construction of assessments. My study specifically focuses on authentic assessments. Many of our teachers and administrators, like me, were initially perturbed by what ODL might entail for our students. The common concerns, which I think you will be able to relate to, are the following. Poor time management, 
difficulty in following online instructions, especially for those in the lower grades. Um, distractions at home, difficult, um, difficult and too many asynchronous tasks, anxiety about readiness for assessments, and also cheating opportunities. Given all these concerns, it is thus imperative um, to rethink the purpose of assessments. A way to do so is to determine the essentials of learning. Uh, the essentials of learning include focusing on the depth of learning, articulation of clear and doable learning tasks, uh, designing tasks and assessments that develop student engagement and rigor, grading for mastery, and of course, building a culture of trust. Uh, after knowing what each stakeholder can do, we then assessed our community's readiness for the remote transition. To assess readiness, uh, we took a look at, at uh, devices used at home, type of connectivity and its capabilities, and technology literacy. For my study, the focus is technology literacy. Last May, an ODL readiness uh, survey was conducted by our Education Technology Unit to all our faculty members. One of the items asked how confident our teachers were in creating online assessments. Um, more than 49% answered yes. Moreover, an item inquired what skills and training the teachers need to facilitate ODL successfully. The top responses were giving student feedback, creating a variety of materials, and the usage of technology tools. So these results, the, these survey results, and the common concerns I mentioned earlier prompted me to conduct a study and thereby seek to improve the practices of assessing in online distance learning. I think as educators, um, it is vital to recognize the purpose is why we are assessing, especially in our current setup. Why? Because assessments play an essential role in how students learn, their motivation to learn, and how teachers instruct. The root causes of the difficulty being faced by DLSE teachers are the lack of training on designing and constructing ODL assessments and the discovery that there is an absence of a framework in designing authentic assessments. Hence, my improvement theory is if I can design authentic ODL assessments in social studies, then student performance will improve. Many literatures I have read assert that authentic assessments provide evidence of skills application uh, because these mirror tasks in real-world contexts and uh, encourage teachers to reflect on the relevance of what they teach because teachers increase student engagement in accomplishing authentic tasks students are thus encouraged to demonstrate what they learned wiggins confirms that authentic assessments require students to effectively perform the knowledge they acquire such assessments have a need for complex thought as well as high levels of student participation because these are linked to real life situations. So as such, teachers should provide activities and tasks that are both significant and meaningful to the students as prescribed by Henderson and Carr Kidwell. This is the research problem I sought to answer in my study. How can designing authentic online distance learning assessments improve student performance in an Asian history class? Do. Do is the second stage of the PDSA model. After the, assessing the community's readiness, we then selected the learning model with much, with much consider, consideration for synchronous and asynchronous learning. Choosing a learning model means knowing and understanding different models. I designed the learning path and selected choice boards of technology tools which I embedded in the learning guide I've designed. I obtained primary research data from 38 grade 7 students, 21 males and 17 females. The research design I used in my study is the descriptive mixed method of approach. Quantitative data were analyzed using descriptive statistics, while descriptive data were analyzed using thematic analysis. In this study, I utilized G Suite for education applications such as Classroom, Docs, 
forms, slides, meet, and Jamboard. Are you familiar with uh, G Suite uh, ed uh, for Education? I hope you are. Um, so I facilitated ODL class sessions for two cycles, which is um, equivalent to four sessions. This required designing a learning guide and a learning playlist using docs and forms respectively. So basically what the teachers did, I also did. I went through all these and uh, I share the same um, sentiments with them. The LMS used was Google Classroom. And for my slide presentation, I used slides similar to what I am uh, using right now to present to you. Data were gathered by obtaining the scores of the formative and summative assessments, self-assessment student ratings, and responses of the students' uh, feedback form using Google Forms. The good thing about Google Forms is that um, it gives real-time um, um, analytics um, um, results come in right away. So for synchronous sessions, I used Google Meet, which has features like screen sharing, controls for meeting hosts, um, adjustable layouts and screen settings, among others. Um, just to um, uh, show you, um, I, I took a snippet of a synchronous session, my first session with uh, the class I, I taught. Good. Many of you are, are, are so into this activity and you know a lot of uh, uh, famous landmarks. So let's go to our main activity for the day. Um, I'd like you to uh, go to your Google Classroom. Uh, Ms. Mads posted uh, an activity. Activity 2, Article Analysis. I'll give you time to read and go through the uh, the articles. There are two articles. One is about population and one is about uh, the environment. So before we discuss it, before we discuss your answers to the questions I've uh, placed there, I'd like you to work quietly, individually, and... Uh, I'll just do a strategic pause right now to, to check if everyone's uh, still okay and still with me. Okay, so that's just a sample. And then, aside from all these, I facilitated the focus group discussion with four Asian history teachers in October to validate curriculum preparation and assessment design. I, I used Google Meet and Google Jamboard. Similarly, notes and observations were recorded all throughout the conduct of my study. Every synchronous session, I made sure to give reminders on data privacy, seek permission regarding the recording of the ODL session, and reiterate the intellectual property of the academic materials used for the lesson. I sought permission from our executive vice president and data privacy officer prior to the conduct of this study. So here is the summary of the data gathering procedures. For my research instruments, there were three assessments and one feedback form prepared for this study, all of which were constructed using Google Forms. The types of assessments used were formative, summative, and self-assessment um, that were designed to help the students achieve the learning targets. In addition, I created a questionnaire or a feedback form that was utilized to know the student's per perception on an ODL lesson that centered on authentic assessments. Um, data were collected through a through a scale of agreement or disagreement. If the authentic assessments design that I designed and the technology tools that I used uh, were helpful or useful in ODL. Eight out of the 10 items included a five-point rating scale with options rating from one strongly disagree to five strongly agree. The remaining two items in the feedback form required constructed responses, namely the most helpful activity 
and the new key ideas gained after answering the learning playlist. So quantitative data were analyzed using descriptive statistics using the SPSS version 20 program. Qualitative data were analyzed using the thematic analysis. Through descriptive statistics, it was determined if the authentic assessments and the technology tools were suitable in measuring the required target skills. Okay, is everyone still okay? Because um, we, are, uh, we now come to the most exciting part of the presentation, the findings. Oh, yes, yes. So okay. study is the okay, third okay. stage so of anyway, the PDSA uh, model. Just text me if they have questions. Through my study, and... I was able to find out if the authentic assessments I designed has improved student performance. Um, one of the things that I realized is that um, indeed, evaluating technology decisions um, has helped me make better choices for um, instruction. Okay. More than 84% of the class obtained a perfect score of 5 over 5 for the formative assessment, which um, was called Think Green. It is a problem solution task on environmental issues. Okay, so here are the sample student responses. I'll give you um, ample time to, to read. Um, uh, the responses of our students. Grade 7 yan. Galing, no? <laughs> Oo nga, no? <laughs> oh, diba, As young ba? people. <laughs> okay. What I really like about the responses of uh, our students was that it uh, their responses were... Um, practical, doable, and actually they have been doing it um, already. Um, and it's a matter of reinforcing them uh, to do all these um, and uh, find solutions to environment pro environmental problems that we have. Okay. Formative pa lang yan. <laughs> Formative pa lang yan. So, um, uh, this, I think, uh, th these results, well, these take the cake. Why? Because 100% of the class received the perfect score of 10 over 10 for submitting an authentic output, which is a disaster preparedness plan. Um, it is a scaffold activity integrated with science. And um, I checked their outputs. Um, my co-teacher also checked the outputs, and we have the same evaluation the students really submitted authentic outputs uh, for their summative assessment. So I will show you samples of the outputs um, for, um, for data privacy purposes. I, I erased the names of the students. Okay, so these are the sample um, disaster preparedness plans uh, that they have or that they created. So, um, for every disaster like uh, typhoon, landslide, earthquake, um, they are grouped and uh, they have a designated uh, disaster to research on and then they will come up with their own disaster preparedness plan. So this, is one, this one is for landslides and then for typhoon and then we also have uh, floods and storm surges. So the disaster preparedness plans were created by, by the grade seven students for their families. And, and these plans are placed in a strategic spot in their homes. Okay. For the self-assessment, um, most students um, answered clear for all four learning targets with percentages that range from 58.8% to 73.5%. Mm -hmm. Um, this clearly indicates, uh, indicated that uh, learning was achieved. Uh, one of the, the, the things that I realized or I've learned is that when you articulate the learning targets to both, when teachers articulate the learning targets and students um, understand the learning targets, it gives uh, both a clear direction of the lesson. And um, as I was... Uh, going through literature, um, when students know where they are going, when they have direction, they are more motivated to do the work to have to get it done. 
Okay. So, student performance improved from the formative to the summative assessment because it enabled uh, them to create new meaning in the process. Um, they were tasked to analyze, synthesize, and apply what they have learned in a very substantial manner. This also provided them the opportunity to be more cognizant of their problem-solving abilities, which gave them the motivation and confidence to approach real-world problems. The complexity of all these authentic assessments allowed our students to justify their solutions and draw these from multiple perspectives, which um, highlighted their skills of critical thinking, communication, and collaboration. 21st century skills that they need in order to become future ready. Okay, let's go to the feedback form. Regarding the lesson as a whole, majority of the students strongly agree with all the eight statements in the feedback form with percentages that range from 69% to 96.6%. I'm so kilig with the 96.6%. Moreover, there are two items that required constructive, uh, constructed responses, most helpful activity, and the new key ideas learned, which I will show you in the next slide. But uh, I'll give you um, enough time to uh, digest or to, to view um, uh, this uh, matrix. No? Okay, so if you take a look at the last column, strongly agree, the percentages, I am very overwhelmed how... Uh, highly positive the perceptions of the students. Uh, I mean, the, the highly, highly positive perception of the students uh, as regards to the ODL lesson that I taught them. Okay. So the last two items of the feedback form were constructed responses. So for the students, um, the they found the disaster preparedness plan the most helpful activity and uh, I, I just i would just like to highlight that one of the responses um, for the new key ideas learned actually answered the essential question so uh, the essential question um, for this lesson is how does geography influence the culture and history of the people of asia so um i love it that uh their responses answered the essential question, which indicates that uh, they really learned um, after they did all the activities and assessments. Okay. The findings of my study show that authentic assessments enable students to apply their skills in performing authentic tasks. The results also affirm that teachers are encouraged to reflect on the relevance of what they teach. Um, this was attested by the social studies teachers when I um, had an FGD with them. They were able to really look into uh, or, or had a uh, deep reflection on how they teach. Parang sabi nila, parang mas gusto ko pang galingan. Gusto ko pang galingan ng pag-design ng ng learning playlists para maintindihan lalo ng mga estudyante. Um, because of this, because of the teacher's reflection, uh, student engagement in accomplishing uh, authentic tasks is increased, which motivate them to demonstrate, again, as I mentioned, which motivated them to demonstrate what they have learned. It is evident that the students demonstrated learning. Why? I already showed you. High assessment scores high self-assessment ratings, and highly positive perception on how they uh, viewed the lesson, how the lesson was delivered. Um, they also developed, um, I, I would like to believe that uh, in the course of, of um, studying this lesson, no, I would like to believe that they also developed or, or, or um, uh, inculcated um, skills such as critical thinking, communication, and collaboration, which I think will prepare them to become um, future ready. Okay. Act. 
ACT is the final stage of the PDSA model. It doesn't end here. Marami pa akong gagawin, actually. Because um, the results of this, date, of this study can serve as an initial data in designing authentic assessments for all DLSC social studies teachers from grade school to senior high school. Um, also, the results, the high assessment scores, high self-assessment ratings, and highly positive perception of the students can also serve as baseline data for the next research cycle. Kaya sabi ko, marami pa akong gagawin kasi my next research cycle pa and I will involve the social studies unit. Okay? And um, um, because, remember, uh, one of the root causes is that there is an absence of a framework for design authentic assessments. Now, probably, after this uh, study, we, we should create uh, a framework for designing authentic assessments. That's my next project. And I think future studies, after the framework has been created, should focus on that framework. And um, let's see. Let's see uh, what happens um, when um, others uh, will uh, be engaged in, in such study. Okay, so um, here are the references, the various references I use for the study. I'm already um, uh, almost uh, at the end of my presentation, but before that, um, I would like to uh, express my heartfelt gratitude to, to the following people, my family, of course, my research mentors, Dr. Prudente and Dr. Agua, who have been my constant guide in my research endeavors and adventures. Um, to my DLSZ family, most especially Brother Bernie, Sir Rafi, Miss Janet, the social studies uh, unit uh, led by Miss Ju, um, and my fellow star, my fellow star researchers, and of course, the students who took part uh, in my study. They all made my action research uh, for this year a delightful learning experience. So to close, um, allow me to share with you a stellar quote from classical Greek philosopher Socrates. He said, we cannot live better than in seeking to become better. Passion is truly reflective and impactful where we are today, despite these liminal and difficult times. Thus, I all invite you to continue to cultivate a culture of learning and be instruments of good change in our society. Uh, thank you so much. You may reach me through these, um, uh, through my email, through my IG, and you may view my digital profile, bit.ly slash LMOTC profile to know more about me. Thank you very much for listening. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's the turn of Ms. Milet. There you go. Good morning again, fellow charmers. This is uh, Ms. Milet Estidola, and I'm also from Sobel. I'd like to thank Ms. Leno for opening the session on assessments. Allow me to continue talking about assessments, but this is another area in assessments that we are most concerned about. Um, I actually gave my presentation, uh, the title MAF and AR, the science assessment story. Okay. Um, in the presentation, please expect to see and hear uh, the following acronyms. MAF is for multiple attempts format. AR is on action research. And ODL, um, this is unique to Sobel, so I enclosed the meaning in in uh, quotations because ODL for Sobel actually stands for on online distance learning. But if you try to look at the wider area of distance education, ODL would actually mean open distance learning. MC for multiple choice, of course, you know about FA and SA as formative and summative assessments. All right, as I've said, I will be sharing two stories with you. One is the um, assessment story of the junior high school science unit and our AR story too, okay? The action research story of the unit too. 
And these two things actually bring us to our session target. Uh, I'd like you to be able to trace how AR has helped the DLSC Science Unit rethink and recalibrate assessments for online delivery. There, okay. Next, um, this is like a shout out of acknowledgements na rin. Um, I'm sharing the screen with my lead collaborators from the science unit. I'd like to acknowledge, of course, the very help that these people gave me, Mr. Chris Moreno, Ms. July Villanueva, and Mr. Ezreal Alusilha. They are the lead teachers in chemistry, earth science, and physics in the junior high school science unit. And the other members of the unit too, okay? Uh, these are the members of the earth science, the chemistry, and the physics teams. I had to get their help because um, as coordinator, um, I, I don't get to teach a regular class anymore. We only do team teaching in Sobel. Um, I would write learning materials, modules, and uh, um, playlists for physics because that's where I came from, the physics um, area. Uh, I've taught a class back in cycle two uh, at the start of term two now, but I, I don't really get to teach a class regularly. So these people actually helped me, no? They helped me reconstruct and recalibrate assessments that we've made for ODL. And they've also helped me, um, uh, of course, employ the survey and use MAF as a format. All right. Uh, so there, I'm, I'm, I'll start sharing with you our AR and assessment story. There, just to define the system, no? Um, this is the very context where we are at um, a few months ago. And this is the context that we are in also, uh, still in, in Sobel. Um, when the quarantine was uh, enforced, no? That was in March. Uh, so educational institutions were challenged, no? To, to shift from F to F or face to face to ODL. And then we, that time we had already given the um, final assessment for our grades, grade 10 students. So we, we had a major concern then, uh, how do we complete the grades for last year uh, of grade 10, grade seven, grade eight and grade nine, when some of them have not actually taken the final exam yet. So we also had to plan mechanisms to deliver summative assessments remotely. How can we make sure that students will answer on their own? How to avoid cheating during assessments and plagiarisms of outputs? What can we do about possible honesty issues on assessments and other activities? Could there be a feature in an LMS to reduce or eliminate the risk? I think I'll be needing help in administering online assessments. Lastly, although very important, how do I create reliable and effective online assessments? Is there an app or online site where we could make our tests cheat proof? Those were actually the questions of my colleagues in the science unit about assessment. How can they um, administer assessment with a lot of concerns about honesty? How can they administer assessments about um, a lot of concerns on um, how to construct meaningful, assess meaningful assessments online? All right, let's just continue. So those are the very thoughts of the science teachers. Um, if you can, open your browsers and go to menti.com, all right, and enter this code. I'd like you to tell me how you feel about conducting summative assessments remotely, as in there's a distance of separation between us and our students. Okay, so um, please go to menti.com and enter the code 96, 38, 87, and 1. Okay, are you in menti.com? Yes, Miss. There. Thank you. Thank you. How do you feel about conducting summative assessments remotely? All right. Thanks to those who answered. Thank you. So the, the, the core answer remains challenging, no? That's, uh, that actually describes how you feel about yeah, giving remote assessments. I, I've, uh, I took note of the answers in menti.com and found the biggest word challenging there. You know, of course, like you, we were also a lot challenged um, when we were to give online assessments before. 
we of course we talked about online assessments honesty and so on now and this is the actually second story that i'm going to share with you okay so we we talked about we actually worried about no and had concerns about whether we will continue giving the final exam the final exam or not anymore do we stick with the lms that we've been using for years already or do we shift to an exam platform when we give on assessments do we um make the school purchase an exam platform that promises ar ar ai proctoring or artificial intelligence uh, do we just use the quiz features of Google Classroom or Schoology? Do we just continue to use Edmodo? Or do we make the school buy uh, this paid LMSs that would have more sophisticated exam features like Moodle, Blackboard, Neo, Canvas, and so on? Or do we put our students in video conferences when we make them take assessments? Do we use Gmeet so we can see them? Do we use Google Chat so we can just see what they would be typing or Google Docs? Do we just use Google Forms or are we open to getting other video conferences and so on? There was a lot of cons, uh, there was a lot of alternatives, choices in technology that was actually going on. So I personally felt I was floating now in clouds of these alternatives and technology and floating also in a number of concerns that, uh, that actually involve giving assessments remotely okay but I, I i of course i'm aware that i should be selecting no these modes of delivering on an assessment and this technology that will of course support the image of a lasallian student we a lasallian student we would want to form so ang dami daming choices and alternatives but which of those would greatly support the school's philosophy it's a good thing that in july Okay, um, that actually uh, went on no? from March, April, May, June. Uh, we had FGDs in the unit. We had sharing of assessment practices and assessment experiences because most of us were then enrolled in graduate school. We also had, uh, I also structured um, a DE or a distance education crash course for the science unit. So we've tried some um, assessment formats that we got from grad school, we modified and adopted some. It was really, really good and timely that back in July, a STAR actually came out. Ito yon. This is the STAR program. Um, this uh, actually gave us some guided practice on writing ARs. It was in July that I got an invitation from Miss Janet Torato. Shout out to Miss Janet. Thank you again. All right. And she invited the administrators and the faculty members, of course, to uh, participate in this um, virtual and online webinar and workshop. Okay. Um, we were guided, of course, to write, to think about the, con the current concerns that we have now in online instruction in ODL and how we can maybe give those concerns a backbone. Um, in the STAR program, syempre we, we, uh, we have like the guiding stars. Alam nyo na kung sino yon. <laughs> of course, we have Dr. Prudente and Dr. Aguha as the guiding stars in the STAR program there. This is where um, my AR journey started. Okay. I remember Dr. Prudente would share about Kaizen, no? the Japanese approach for um, doing better and improving, continuing to improve on, on things. And that actually um, stuck in my mind you know, when we, we first had the initial meetings for the STAR program in the LSC. And we even celebrated Dr. Pudenta's birthday in, in the program. Okay, But little did she know that the program and their guidance, Dr. Prudentes and Dr. Agua's guidance, actually gave birth to a number of new researchers in Sobel. And dami na namin who are now into action research. And the program gave birth to a number of uh, action researches and areas of, uh, um, areas of uh, well, topics uh, of, for research, okay. So shout out naren to the doctors again, Doc Prudent and Dr. Ago. Thank you so much again. And that, of course, gave birth to my AR. Uh, I gave it a title, Multiple Attempts in Online Assessment. 
um, to address concerns in academic honesty, perceptions of students and teachers. There. Okay, just to describe what MAF is, okay, in this action research, um, we just dealt with content and multiple choice assessments because science is both a content and a skills based subject. Uh, of course, we are geared towards giving them um, skills assessment and performance tasks, but we cannot just uh, do away with content and multiple choice assessments because um, behind the ODL structure, we would also have that um, uh, target to actually train, continue to train our students in answering standardized or standard-based assessments, which are normally in multiple choice um, type. So they are in the, this AR, we made use of multiple choice tests. The tests are of course in HOTS level, and I made sure that none of the items, none of the items is of course readily searchable. Um, the exam is of course under strict time limit and are proctored remotely. Um, the students were given two to three attempts, of course, with immediate feedback for every attempt that they do. And for this study, we made use of MAF or multiple attempts format for two formative assessments first before we employed MAF in the succeeding summative assessments. Okay, so in earth science, in chemistry, and in physics, we uh, um, the AR actually covered two formative assessments and three summative assessments in a number of cycles. Um, you must be wondering why the bio or the biology team is not involved here because um, the bio team will be involved in the next cycle of the AR uh, where we will be using another format or exam platform naman in the action research. Okay, so that's MAF in this AR. And I was thinking about this research problem then. How do students perceive the use of MAF um, in assessments no, with concerns in academic honesty and in remote assessments? Does MAF really prevent the students from thinking about cheating? Does it really um, help them improve their scores without getting an authorized answers or information from somewhere. If it really does, then maybe we should share it no, with the other departments also or the other units. Um, how do teachers perceive the use of MAF in addressing concerns in academic honesty? Does it really help them tone down their concerns on cheating when they give online assessments? If it really does, how does it do that? And if it really does, then how can we share it with the other departments? Uh, this was the very improvement theory I had in mind then. If the multiple attempts method is used as an assessment delivery format for science, then, then the teacher's um, concerns on online tests, administration, and students' academic honesty will be significantly reduced. There, okay. The main instrument for the study, uh, for the action research actually, I, I tagged it as PMAC, Perceptions on MAF, and academic honesty questionnaire. So as you can see from the images here, there were 584 students who participated in the survey and 10 teachers who joined me in the survey also. Okay, um, the survey, we actually made use of Google Forms for the survey. Um, one very big insight that I got from the STAR program is that when you employ a survey, you do not just ask questions from anywhere, but your questions need to be based on theories and or principles. Um, and so these are the very basis of the survey statements I included in PMAC. I looked at a study about the different forms of academic dishonesty in online tests, mga techniques and strategies that our students can be exposed to our students may be tempted to do no, when they answer online assessments. And I also looked at um, an article about principles of online assessment and made this too the very basis of my survey. Okay, just to share a bit of this, um, I looked at two different forms of dishonesty in online assessments. Um, 
and then I sort of match the dishonesty strategies no, with MAF countermeasures, like getting assessment answers in advance, unfair retaking or grade changing of assessments. This is when we would hear students no, uh, tell us now, Miss, I got disconnected. Let me take the test again. Um, that was, well, some would be able to uh, would be able to change the system clock and tell you that they have not seen the test yet, but they have actually had, no? Some would, would claim that they had power outage and so you should let them take the test again and so on. So we actually established MAF countermeasures to, to answer this possible dishonesty techniques that our students can be tempted to do, okay? But I'd like to stress that um, well, these are not the images of students we would like to form. I personally looked at the many dishonesty techniques in online assessments just so I can formulate, I can design and employ mechanisms to help them, no, to help my students and our students strengthen their academic honesty. I hope you're still with me there. The second basis of my um, survey or of PMAC is the principles of creating meaningful assessments. And then I matched those principles with MAF mechanics, okay? And then from there, I formulated the survey statements or questions. Number one principle on online assessments is that we need to provide clear instructions and quality feedback. And they get that when we employ MAF, they, get, they easily get feedback in every attempt that they do. Um, we also emphasize academic integrity. We've reconstructed the items so they do not, they do not, um, they cannot be readily searchable in Google. And this was also when we made use of the Lasallian, Lasallian Honor Code. And at least in the science unit, all our examinations are proctored, although remotely, okay, proctored, but in just a sample, uh, uh, actually a, a part of the assessment guidelines. We, um, we use in the science unit, and this is for remote proctoring, no? We actually strongly requested the students to follow this setup. There, this is where the teacher can see the screen and siempre the, ano, the environment of the student also. Okay. Why again? Because we would rather devote energy and effort in you know, educating them about academic um, academic honesty and strengthen their intellectual honesty instead of devote effort in detection or in sanction. So MAF actually supports this principle here. Uh, we, we put more planning and effort in education rather than detection and sanction. Okay, these are the PMAC results, no? Um, out of the 500 plus students, 584, okay. And the results were analyzed, of course, using um, SPSS of the school, actually, no? uh, version 22 there. I'm sharing some of the statements from the survey with you. Statement number one, MAF teaches students to improve their scores by studying their correct and incorrect answers. Um, correct and incorrect answers and then take by taking the next attempt. If you will see in the graph, 57% of 500 students actually answered, they strongly agree with the statement. So that's like six out of 10 students saying, yes, we strongly agree with statement number one. And there was 34%, okay. So that's three out of 10 students saying, yes, they agree with statement number one. These are their perceptions, okay. For statement number two, it says, MAF strengthens students' academic honesty in taking MC tests in science. 54% said they strongly agree. So that again is five out of 10 students. And another 35% or up to four out of 10 students agreed to this statement. So if we put them together, that's five and four, that's like nine students, uh, nine students giving us a very positive perception about the use of MAF and how it strengthens their academic honesty. For statement number three, in MAF, students would most likely study their own answers and take the next attempt 
rather than get help from a batchmate. So the same pattern of percentage, five, uh, 57% or six out of 10 students strongly agreed and three out of 10 students agreed to the statement. So very, very positive perception on MAF and academic honesty. And then the time limit in MAF is long enough for students to study their own answers and take the next attempt, but not too long enough for them to get answers from unauthorized sources. Um, this also prevents them, no, in a way prevents them from taking a screenshot of it and sharing the screenshot with other students because of the strict time limit. 51% strongly agreed and 38% agreed to the statement. And the last item I would want to share with you in the survey is item number eight. MAF provides students with immediate feedback, which helps the students decide if they will take the next attempt or not. Uh, using the MAF does not make the MC test a giveaway. It also, in a way, teaches them about responsibility and taking risks. So if they see that their score is not okay with them, that's when students decide not to take the first, the second attempt, okay? So there's some sort of, sort of responsibility being built here and also the value of taking risks there in making decisions there. 55% strongly agreed that yes, MAF provides students with immediate feedback. I say after answering the first attempt, they get to see their score, they get to study their wrong answers and decide if they want to take the second attempt or not anymore. And then 36% answered they agree with the same statements. So if we put them together, that's getting nine out of 10 students again, no, agreeing that yes, MAA, MAF provides students with immediate feedback and it helps them decide if they will take the next attempt or not. There. Okay. For conclusion and recommendation, all right. Um, we'll, we'll skip this part for the quizzes. I wanted to give you the feel sign of MAF, but, but would probably rather devote more time in the question and answer. I'll show you a part of the conclusion and recommendation I wrote in the manuscript, okay. Uh, I wrote both the teacher and student participants hold very positive perceptions about MAF and how it addresses concerns on academic honesty in online tests. The PMAC revealed valuable insights from the teachers and students thoughts about MAF and academic honesty and so on. There. Just to show you a few samples. Now we made some of the teachers made use of Google Forms. We don't have a paid and institutional LMS yet. So we made use of Google Forms there. This is for attempt one. Okay, you see the LaSallian honor code is included there. You'll also notice that there are 110 responses for this attempt. And in the second attempt, there were only 99 responses. So some students did not choose to take the second attempt anymore, meaning they're content with what they got in the first attempt, okay there, while the other teachers made use of Schoology, okay, the, the course feature of Schoology. And this is one sample where a student got nine over 11. And in the second attempt, the student got 11 or over 11 or a perfect score. Okay, there. Um, uh, all the data, of course, uh, research ideas that we have, um, I remember because of what Einstein said, no, my physics teachers would always quote this, that God does not play dice. So in re research and collecting data, we, we do not play dice about this, but we get, we anchor everything, whatever innovation or action we want to do through AR or research, we anchor everything in the school's philosophy. I'm almost ending, actually ending part. All right. I, I want you to consider your school's philosophy, despite of the concerns that we have about giving remote assessments, okay? Um, this is what I made, and I'm going to show you what my partner made uh, in a while. Uh, I wrote, at De La Salle Sabel School, we use meaningful assessments to form digital learners for social transformation and zeal for service. We're supposed to use Jamboard, but then again, that's going to take time. So instead, I am encouraging all of you to maybe use the chat box, no? 
in the type in your answers. If you can think about another acrostics or maybe just another acronym for the name of your school with the school's philosophy in mind and assessment in mind too, then you can do something like this as a challenge. Ms. Lay, uh, my partner also made an acrostics for ODL naman. Ms. Lay? Okay, so ODL. Um, um, we might, I didn't tell you this, Ms. Millet, no, pero ang yeah. una ko naisip, our daily labor. <laughs> yes, yes, but, of course. But yes. actually, but uh, if you are uh, really into, if you have that passion, you're into your work and you love your work, Yes. It's, it's not a daily labor. It's not our daily labor. It becomes our duty of love. And yeah. as as I've mentioned uh, here in the in the slide, no, as educators, we are always given a choice to fill each minute with dedication and love for others. Yes, yes, very <laughs> much. Of course, uh, Miss Tiba Miss Lay, that actually forms the core of the DLSC exactly. you know, philosophy. Correct. This, uh -oh, this, and. And what you what you you just you know you yes. just said okay. Thank you, Miss Millet. Thank you, Miss Lay. So to end uh, my presentation, I'd like to share this quote from Saint Lasalle. That's this is as you type no the acronym for your school in the chat box. Okay, um, there the young should be able to see in your wisdom how they should behave. Thank you again to all of you, and thank you to Doctor Pedente and Doctor Agua and. Uh, the charm uh, community, siempre. Oh, uh, there. You may use the chat box and think of a new acronym. Uh, a new acronym for for your school. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Okay, thank you, Miss Millet and Miss Lay, for the wonderful sharing of your um, uh, research. You know, your work. Okay, we learned a lot today. And this is one very sensitive uh, topic, actually, that everyone uh, is really interested in. It's all about, you know, assessment. Okay, we are all struggling to have, you know, right. The, yes. the right approach. Okay, the right attack to uh, ensuring academic honesty. I like uh, the point. So what we should be strengthening is the academic honesty instead of policing our students sanctioning them or, uh, you know, uh, looking for ways on how uh, how to catch them uh, uh, yeah, online. Yeah, that was really good. Okay. okay, so at this point, uh, we are inviting everyone to Type in their questions in the chat box. Please do utilize the chat box for your questions. Yes. Okay. This is from Lourdes Olmedo. So how many attempts are allowed? This must be for Ms. Millet. So either Lay or Ms. Millet can uh, answer the question. Yes, it's actually included in the presentation. In some, in some assessments, we give students who are specifically in the physics assessments book. But in, in chemistry and in earth science, we would give Three attempts. So two to three attempts. Two to three attempts. Okay. Yeah, there's a follow up from Lourdes Olmedo. Yeah. What I do is to take a quiz on. Would that be okay? Two to three attempts. Thank you so much. What I do is to take a quiz on incorrect answers. Um, no, miss. You'll have to redo everything, but you're shown. Uh, you're expected, of course, to remember your correct answers because you're shown your correct answers already. So if you answer 10 items in the first attempt, you will answer 10 items again in the second attempt. But the items are, okay. the items are um, shuffled, the choices themselves are shuffled within each item, and some, some items are reversed already, but of course, addressing the same competencies. There. Okay. From Adrian Ginto, thank you, uh, Ms. Millet. From Adrian Ginto, and he's asking, if ever we'll be doing an AR, can we adapt your framework? Of course, of Miss. Course. I would just have to ask for the guidance of <laughs> the guiding stars, <laughs> Dr. Pudente and Dr. Agua. Opo, opo. Mm -hmm. 
that's a, that's the best idea actually of this adult online yes. lecture series. Right okay. from the featured uh, speakers, we have our action research gurus, Dr. Ding yes. and Dr. Aguha, to guide us, I mean, to the journey okay, of action research. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, if I may ask, uh, Miss Millet, has this uh, has this been an article uh, written for this? Not yet. A manuscript. Doc? Yeah, yeah, an article Opo. for for publication. Okay. Opo, so after said, after you have published, then you can share with them. Oh yes, thank you, Doc. Thank you. Opo. That's great. Okay, for those who just uh, attended today's adult online lecture series, again I repeat. Uh, Leader and Bagset offer weekly free online lecture series on conducting action research. And this is already our 17th, right, Dr. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. This is uh, the <laughs> 17th online lecture series, and there will be more coming uh, in the next uh, Mondays to come. Okay, so tune in to our. Uh, Zoom, okay, every Mondays from 10 to 12. Uh, this is in preparation for the Action Research, Action Learning Virtual Congress 2021 happening on, okay, as early as now, I'm all, we are already announcing. It's happening on May 2021 to 22, 2021. Okay, so it's easy to remember. 20, 2021, 2021. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yep. we will be posting the call for paper soon, so just stand by. So we hope that uh, we have already started uh, your project yeah, on action research and that if you need any assistance, this is what this adult online lecture series or charm is doing. Yeah. There's another question from Domingo Soriao. How do you think we could apply same assessments for a modular mode of learning, particularly honest assessment? Mm, for the modular, okay. So what we have discussed is for the online. Mm -hmm. This question is about modular, no, Doc? So it, it's, um, this is of a very different context kasi in Sobel. So we, we do ODL in Sobel and or all examinations are conducted online. In the modular approach, of course, there's a lot of other assessment principles that you can visit and you can, of course, look into. And I think a part of that is actually to um, inclined towards making authentic assessments, as Ms. Leia actually shared, and uh, skills-based and performance-based assessment. So if it's modular, Ms. Leia, can you share, like, if it's modular, what assessments can they do aside from, of course, authentic no assessment? Then? Yeah. Maybe, Ms. Millet, what they can also look into is uh, what many schools are doing, like what we are doing, having a, an honor code because yes. that will reinforce um, integrity, the integrity of, of yes. uh, integrity and honesty. And regardless if it's online or modular, what matters is, is we teach our students uh, yes. to be honest. So that's, right. um, that's I think, the, the mm -hmm. most common principle yes. for all uh, types of assessment, or sorry, types of uh, mode. Oh, that's, that's right, Ms. Lay. The, the very mm -hmm. core of what we plan for assessment should, of course, be how to strengthen our yes. students' academic honesty. But I think, Ms. Millet, you when you mentioned authentic assessments, I think uh, that's a, a good a good way of... Uh, yes. Alternative. Alternative, because, yeah. Of course. Because the, the AR kasi on MAF only dealt with online MC assessments. I see. Mm -hmm. wow. Thank you. Hi, Doc Bing. Yeah. Doc Bing has heard. Hello, Doc Bing. Doc Bing. Yep. We know Mike. With your yep. Your Hello, mic. Your microphone is off. On webinar. Okay. Uh, there's another question, follow-up question uh, from Christian Jeff Cariaga. Would MAF be advisable also for other types of tests? Let's say short response or essay. Um, it's it's for content assessment. So if you give content assessments in essay form, uh, aside from multiple choice, maybe identification, but we make use of those formats because only in formative assessments in Sobel. Uh, our summative assessments are usually in in multiple choice and essays. So there, you can use MAF too for essay questions. 
Mm, that's great. Okay. There's uh, another follow-up question from Lourdes Olmeda. Yeah. May, may a teacher be allowed to drop an honor code? Is that advisable? Thank you. Oh, I think Miss Lay is in the best uh, no, position to answer that. <laughs> yes, Miss um, Lay. Of the honor right, Miss Lay. Okay, so what we did so that it will be uh, standardized no, for, for, mm -hmm. for, for all departments. Well, um, uh, the academic heads would uh, propose a, a, a honor code and then it will be discussed uh, within the councils. And then once it is a final, we present it to the teachers. Yes. And then... Um, uh, and then after that, uh, we, we then make use of it in our assessments. Yes. So, yeah, like what Ms. Uh, Balgos mentioned here, it should be institutional. Yes, but yes. then in the grade school, um, well, it was praised much differently compared to the high school so, so that the students can easily understand um, what the honor code is. But then, yeah, um, common to, to all to all departments is a standard, uh, is a standard honor code. We call it the Lasallian, the Young Lasallian Honor Code. <laughs> yeah, nice one. Okay. Lasallian, okay. Young Lasallian Honor Code. Uh, yep, yeah, it's asking, but my question is in the absence of an honor code. So, I mean, if they don't have an honor code yet in the institution, oh. I mean, oh, um, they can come up with that, ma'am. Um, yeah. Your, your, from your their academic own. head, yeah, your yes. academic heads uh, should come up with that so that it's it's standardized across all departments or across all levels. Yes, and Miss Lay, that can also be a good um, topic for another action research. No? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the, yes, uh, that's right. those who are interested. <laughs> yes. yes. Mm -mm. Para ang this is like can an ordinary teacher draft course and then present it to their academic heads of I, I think yeah you can do that um, it okay. can be yeah. a collaborative ano naman po, uh, process I mean it can it can go to that process naman. yes yeah. um, and then it just has to be um, um, discussed actually actually you can you can draft one and then show it to your colleagues mm -hmm. okay you can collaborate also with your yeah with your colleagues and then they, you, you can draft one present it to your academic heads and then discuss it in a meeting seguro and yes. then among yourselves okay what revisions to make and then you, you can make it institutional yeah that's right uh-huh thank you any other questions uh yeah exactly what i was thinking yeah, i can draft at least for our department that's right Lourdes. You can yes. draft, yeah for your department okay i'm i'm pretty sure your academic heads and your uh administrators will appreciate that right? the initiative yeah. will come from you then you can present it to them okay and then you can discuss it in a meeting okay and then you know uh mm -hmm. you can also uh, uh contribute okay in the in what you have and and yeah, you share with them that you got all these ideas in attending our online lecture series. Please invite them, your colleagues, your friends, those who have not uh, joined uh, the our online lecture series, please do invite them, tell them all about charm. That we have this community <laughs> habit of action research on Mondays. Okay, spread the word. Uh, yeah, this is going to continue until probably Aral uh, 2021. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Any other questions? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Gagawin daw ni Miss Lourdes. Malay mo, isi-share din sa atin ni Lourdes yan. Oh. In the Aral uh, 2021. Okay, yes. Represent niya yan as a paper. So I encourage those who are uh, working on an AR project and if you, have, if you have questions, attend our sessions so that, yep, yeah, uh, yeah. when you have questions, you can raise them uh, during the Q&A of our online lecture series. What we like the most here is that, you know, the exchange of ideas after the lecture. We have our uh, experts here, Dr. Aguha and Dr. Being of course, okay, who will help uh, address your questions. Okay. Uh, also, if this is your first time to attend, you might want to um, uh, check the previous lectures. Or what you can do is to visit our YouTube channel. We're on YouTube actually. Okay, please uh, look for Leader at the LSU. 
So we upload all previous uh, lectures on action research. Maybe the topic that you're working on, okay, is in one of uh, the previous lectures on action research. So please do, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just look for leader at the LSU, okay? Subscribe so that you get to uh, follow our action research lecture series, okay? Any other? So at this point, yeah, if we don't have uh, questions anymore. Any final thoughts, Dr. Uh, Aguha, Dr. Bing, that you'd like to say? Okay. I would like to thank the two speakers who uh, willingly shared with us their time and effort. They are budding action researchers, so I hope they got to inspire those who are uh, interested to do action research. So these two are, uh, I shall I say, witnesses, testimonies that it can be done, and they've done it. And That's now they're presenting it in, an inter in the international arena. So congratulations to you both. I, we are so proud of you for having uh, decided to do action research. Let's uh, infect the AR, AR virus more. That's Thank you. Good. Yes, okay. Congrats, Milet and Lay for that one. Uh -huh. So at this point, we would like to present now the certificate of appreciation to our two speakers. Okay, so please, Dr. Aguha. Yes, our certificate of appreciation to both the speakers. De La Salle University, Brother Andrew Gonzalez FSC College of Education, Bagsted, La Salle Institute for Development and Educational Research Leader, and Action Research, Action Learning, Aral, present the Certificate of Appreciation to Ms. Carmelita A. Estidola for conducting the DLSU Bagsted Leader Aral Online Lecture Series entitled Multiple Attempts in Online Assessments Address Concerns in Academic Honesty, Perceptions of Students and Teachers, held on December 7, 2020, 10 a.m. to 12 noon via Zoom. Signed, Dr. Raymond C. Season, Dean Bagset, Dr. Sherry N. Dita, Director, Leader, and Dr. Maricar Studente, Congress Chair, Congress Chair RL 2020. Thank you, Ms. Um, Thank you, Ms. Millet. Thank you, Ms. Millet. Okay. And now for Ms. Yeah, Ms. Hayes. So, so the Brother Andrew Gonzalez at the College of Education, Bagset, the Salian Institute for Development and Educational Research Leader and Action Research Action Learning RL, present the Certificate of Appreciation to Ms. Leia Marie Tumlos Pasquilla for in conducting the DLSU Bagset Leader Ara online lecture series entitled Designing Authentic Online Distance Learning Assessments in Teaching Asian History, held on December 7, 2020, 10 a.m. to 12 noon via Zoom. Signed, <coughs> this is on the Dean the Bagset and Dr. Shirley and Dita, Director Leader, and Dr. Marika Escudente, Congress Chair, RL 2020. Congratulations, Ms. Lay and Ms. Congratulations, and thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. And Ms. Millet, okay, for sharing with us your uh, project, okay? Uh, also, at this point, we'd like to uh, invite you to our next RL online lecture. Uh, Ms. Lee uh, is now Okay, posting here. The topic for next, so we have two speakers again next week. So one is Miss, uh, yes, Miss Balgos, of course, and Mr. Ferran, both from De La Salle Zobel. Okay, so one is on effectiveness of reflective module towards students, responsible use of social media, and the other one is Google Forms, and uh, based lesson playlist, examining students' attitude towards its use and its effect on performance. So we invite everyone to join us again next Monday, same time, 10 to 12, for uh, more <coughs> adult online lecture series. So again, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Uh, Angela Veloso, mga kwande natin yan, regular charmers natin. Sina Randolph Katungan, mga regular uh, 
uh, chimers natin. Okay, Alejandro Soriano. Okay. They are regular. May okay. Royal Sea Award na kayo nito. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, Miss Liz will now post the link to the evaluation, yeah, so that you can claim your... Uh, Yes, yeah, si Mr. Roger Tejada din siya regular. Yeah, yung mga regular natin na memorize ko na ang names nila eh kasi I always see them. Okay, attend our charm. Mga certified charmers. Okay, mga high <laughs> Okay, yeah. thank you for attending. Miss Liz has already posted the link to evaluation. Please do accomplish the form so that you will receive your e-certificate, okay, in your inboxes. So again, uh, thank you very much to our speakers and to those who attended uh, today's uh, lecture on assessment of action on action research. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you so much. Bye bye, everyone. See you on Monday. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Yes. Thanks, Lay and Millet. Thank you, Dr. Doc Indai. Doc Indai. Thank mm -hmm. you, Dr. Lee. Thank, thank you, so you everyone. Much.